Welcome to The Shooting Show, brought to you this week from Sporting Rifle Headquarters at Leamington Spa. We're following David Virtue in the Scottish borders on an exciting roof shoot, plus we cross the Irish Sea for our second instalment of Seeker Stalking with Jason Doyle. David Virtue isn't just a stalking guide or goose shooter, he also runs rough shoots of legendary status. We hear news that one is underway and head to the borders just in time to see David set out the plan of action. At nine, we've got shine sneaking, he's got so you know you're quiet, get in, pond, this is beyond those trees, but that single tree is, pond is in there, so hopefully we'll come up at the winter. We want at least three guns out on the other side of that wall, halfway up the wall, spread out. And then it'll come two feet high. Yeah, yeah. Mummy know as far up as the trees because if you go too far up, the ducks will see us in the pond. So you have to push, on the push them that way. They're all wild duck in here, so it's you just got to be very, very quiet. Try to do an ambush. Okay. So you get around three round on that side, three and four on that side, and then two or three on this side, okay? They'll tend to go that side, I would say. So maybe four on that side, four hang on this side. We're hoping for a varied bag of duck pheasant, wood pigeon and maybe a few more of the elusive various. There's been frost on the ground recently but today has dawned mild and David is upbeat. How's the season progressing? I know you had a, a couple of mornings of hard frost which made life a little bit challenging. Yeah, yeah, well it freezes up these snipe bogs and, and, and if, if it's hard for two or three, certainly three or four days here it can move a lot of game out of the area, a lot of the ponds get frozen, the teal will move, mallard will move, they generally go to the rivers and the streams and stay in the area but your snipe can move away to the west coast. Isley in these places and the woodcock as well, they can, you know, big numbers of woodcock last week but they've kind of moved off a bit with the frosts. But that's, it's wild game, you know, that, that, that is it. it you're going to be here one minute and gone the next. It's, it's up and down with the weather. As you, you, today it's quite, gone quite mild again, the other day it was harder, colder frosts. And yeah, it's just, it will take each day as it comes. And it, one day they can be easy, other day they can be very hard. It's, it's uh, there's no, you know, you just have to do, judge the weather when it's out, you're out in the morning and work your decoys a bit more or, or, or change things about a bit more. But that's again, that's hunting. It's 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 uh, it makes it challenging, and that's that's what's good about it. The guns are in position for the first drive. This shoot has brought together David's regular clients with some guests from overseas. But there's no sign of a culture clash as a spring of tail comes in, and the boys take to the job in hand with enthusiasm. That's the first birds of the day in the bag, and there'll soon be a few more joining them. Roof shooting isn't about the numbers, it's about the experience of shooting a variety of species and bringing like-minded sportsmen together. We catch up with one gun who's come all the way from Scandinavia to learn how we do things in the UK. It's very nice, very different from my hunting. I usually hunt with rifle and I hunt uh, bigger games and uh, this, but and I could not imagine that it, it would be so nice that it had been these few days. Mm. It's, been, it's exciting, isn't it? It's very exciting. Very in this, uh, what they call rough shooting is it's wonderful. It's, uh, it's totally different from what I'm used to. There was actually a goose sneaked off I there. I saw that out to the left there. I agree, I, agree. I sneaked off away. Uh. We waste no time in heading to the next bait once David has rounded up the guns. We're all going up this path. Okay, you need to be quiet here. You listening? <laughs> Go up that fence line, yeah, yeah. but you'll keep low against the tight against that fence at the far side. Yeah, yes, yeah. okay, yes. tight against that fence at the far side. 
Dave, look at these pheasants. Yeah, let the pheasants go first. Yeah, yeah. Shoot the teal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. you've got to try and shoot the teal, mallard, and then there'll be pheasants. No. You can spread right out across this field yes. when the pheasants are yes. coming. Yes. It didn't yes. mean you're open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to tuck in the teal at the start. So you want tight against the fence and down. Keep right. yourself hunkered down. Right, right. And teal come over at them. Yes. David puts all his experience to good use, getting every member of the team in exactly the right position. The guns stay low and hidden, allowing the teal to come in overhead. Even our cameraman is following the plan. He's positioned so well, he has to dodge out of the way of the falling birds. It's another short but successful wild duck drive. The guns certainly seem to be enjoying themselves. We find time for a quick count of the bag, which seems to contain mostly teal and mallards so far. Yeah, we missed the oh. pheasant. Only the feathers. <laughs> Bloody pheasant coming out there, didn't it? How many teal have you got in your hand? How many teal have you picked up? How many is here? Three. Three. I bet there was a fifth high one shot. Yeah, I think that. We, we I a mallard. Have you, have you got another teal? With the count complete, David sets up the guns for a quick walk and stand affair across the snipe bog. That gate, you know, along the track and to the wall, maybe even, or, or, or cover your surround, get the end guys right round, okay? Yeah. 50, 60 yards apart. Yeah. The guns line out, hoping for a repeat of the last two drives, but all seems quiet, too quiet. When the birds do come, the elusive snipe take us by surprise. Go that way a bit, go that way a bit, quickly, quickly, go that way. We leave the boys to get in a few more shots and claim a hen pheasant as we get David's tips for roof shooting success. Well, you're wi it's wild duck that you're trying to get round about and if you're shouting your dogs or making a noise, whistling or things like that, you've got, you've got to be quiet and, 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 and if the ponds, some of these ponds are a wee bit in the open, that's where the ducks like them because they can see people coming, you've got to sneak in there and get yourself sneaked in quietly and then hopefully the ambush works and, and you get a shot or two, sometimes it doesn't work and, and the whole lot are away and gone and it's, you know, it's, it's, that's it. Stoking up the guns once more, we ready ourselves for another exciting drive. David is back out amid the action and leading from the front. Get ready to shoot when these ducks rise. You want them. After an initial flurry, things go quiet once more. The guns are in position and following David's instructions obediently. One more spring of teal right now would make everyone's day, and finally, we get what we're after. The weather we've had and the frost, this is the love this area. Get over, 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 get over. Why couldn't he miss a couple? Shall we take the pace? Mate, mate, you picked it just right there. I've woke up. I know it was. Guessed it right. Spectacular. Everyone's clearly in a good mood as we pick up the birds. Over, 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 host, host. It's mostly teal, but we've also been lucky enough to bag mallard, pheasant, pigeon, snipe, crow and woodcock over the course of the day, as well as some geese from the dawn flight and a couple of larger quarry that fell to the rifle. The day is drawing to a close, but there's just time for one more shot at a wily cock pheasant. Before the guns head for home, we ask one happy regular what keeps him coming back to the David Virtue shoot, and then the man himself delivers his verdict. We shot a few teal, some mallard, uh, a few pheasants, um, all different sorts of things. So you, you've yeah. got quite a mixed bag at the end of it. Yeah, right? yeah, that's what we come up here for. We all shoot a mixed bag and then at the end we all take what we like and uh, it's all fit for the table. This is my eighth year up here. Um, I do a lot of lamping foxes down my way in Cambridgeshire area. Yeah. Um, I also do a lot of pigeon shooting and I do quite a few driven days as well. Just mm -hmm. local stuff. I've been out on the first night stalking but I guided my friend on a little bit we know from just up the road. Then in the morning we Were went successful? out. 
Uh, Jason was successful, yeah. He uh, he managed to bag himself a road doe uh, from the high seat, which was nice. Does everything go back and you guys put it in your freezer? Yeah, everything, everything, yeah. Everything's taken and eaten and the carcasses are given to the ferrets or dogs, yeah. whichever, yeah. No waste? No. We put it in a mixed species bag. Of, uh, it's, not a, it's not a big bag, I would say, but a mixed species bag that we've got uh, teal, mallard, snipe, woodcock, hares, pheasants, uh, wood pigeons, just a bit of mixed, mixed shooting. And, and one of them did, did a high seat one night, and one of them shot a fox, one of them shot a, one of them shot a roe. So, yeah, just a bit mixed hunting, but just, aye. Good, good fun hunting. It's totally different to be here and, and I really enjoy it, really. Good. And do, do you think you'll be back? For sure, I will be back. Maybe next year. David Virtue there, showing his sporting selection box. And now, the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. The Clay Shooting Classic has a new home. The UK's biggest sporting competition will take place at Windrush Shooting Ground for 2014. Run by the Clay Shooting Company, this year's Classic will see shooters take on a challenging 150 bird course for a share of a £35,000 prize fund. We've got natural heights surrounding us, contours of the ground, spectacular for presenting clays. Mark Winsor took overall high gun last year, but this year's competition is set to be more hotly contested than ever. Read all the details in the new issue of Clay Shooting out this week. The Badger Cull in Gloucestershire has been brought to a close three weeks early. The trial had been extended until the 18th of December, but Natural England agreed to end it as there was little chance of making more headway towards the 70% population reduction target. Natural England said the decision did not affect the original licence granted in Gloucestershire, which would still allow culling to take place over four years. Basque has responded to the poaching menace by circulating thousands of booklets advising how to deal with the threat. The poaching of deer, game and fish contains information on the law and provides advice on types of poaching, offences associated with poaching and how to gather evidence. 5,000 copies of the booklet have already been requested. Download your copy for free now. The Scottish Government has outlined its plans for firearms laws north of the border. In the White Paper on Independence, the SNP said it would make legislation easier for the public to understand and for the authorities to enforce. But worryingly for shooters, it said its starting point would be building on current work to improve control of air guns in Scotland. This has led to fears that stricter firearms controls could be introduced in the style of the planned air gun licensing scheme should Scotland vote yes in the independence referendum. And finally, bird crime in Scotland is at a new low as a new report by the RSPB shows. There were only three confirmed poisonings of birds of prey in 2012, down from 14 the previous year. Buzzard poisoning is down 90% since 2009. The Scottish Gamekeepers Association said it was encouraged by the progress made, but warned that RSPB reports risk damaging ongoing partnerships against bird crime. For the full story, don't miss more than Gamekeeping magazine. That was the Shooting Show News. Well, our intention was to shoot some calves and possibly a yearling hind or two here on a pheasant shoot. From now on, there'll be a lot of shooting on the estate and it'll be difficult to continue with the cull plan. Um, deer go to ground and huge banks of rotted engines here. And with all the beating and shooting, they, they tend to go to ground. So came in this morning, horrendous night of weather last night. Um, wind is all over the place. A couple of high seats where I've been seeing a lot of hinds and calves from. You don't get a reputation as one of the best secret estates in Europe for nothing. This estate has a carefully managed cull plan which Jason is now charged with carrying out. It's a quiet night and a red kite is the most notable wildlife Jason has seen so far. There's been no shootable deer to speak of. We were unlucky, saw a really nice pricket, but couldn't shoot him. He'll be a good stag in years to come. The high seat session ends with a blank. Jason will try his luck again the next day, but change his method to a footstock. So 
Sika are very good breeders, really good breeders. Um, I think officially a Sika hind will breed in her second year. Um, on low-lying low areas like we are now with lots of good quality grass, we have shot yearling hinds that are in calf. Um, I think it depends a lot on the genetics in the area and the quality of the feed. I mean, the deer on this estate would be a lot heavier than the deer on the hill that we were shooting yesterday. Um, just the quality of the food is here, the weather isn't as harsh, there's not as much competition for grass, um, and they don't have to travel as far for it. Deer on the hill, they're getting pushed around by hill walkers and weather and stalkers a lot. Deer on this estate, they can just tuck in and they don't have to move very far for their feeding. We sort of in, try and cull maybe 50% of the hind or the calves that are born a year, but it's hard to judge it. Um, our head stalker, John Fenton, has had this ground for years, so he can, he can judge it fairly well. Keeping in close contact with the gamekeepers, they give us an indication of how many deer they need shot out of it. Um, the farm here as well on this estate, um, when they see lots of deer at night when they're checking sheep and cattle, they get onto us to, to start whacking them and um, we can judge from what they're seeing of how many we need to cull. Um, and we, we try and hit areas harder than other areas if the, if the numbers are stronger. We had a very late spring this year. We had some snow in the winter and a late spring and growth was poor and we saw a lot of hinds without calves and um, whether they aborted just with because the food wasn't good enough for them to support an embryo um, so this year we'll probably cull less than last year and um, you when you're on the ground but sort of by christmas you get a really good feel for what how many deer you have on the ground after the rut and um, when food becomes scarce the hinds spread out and you, you can really see what you have and um, in here we rely a lot on the gamekeepers uh, they keep us informed of the numbers and where they're moving. They're in here every day feeding pheasants twice a day um, and they'll see the deer a lot more than we do. Um, and they give us a good indication during the stag season of how many big stags are on the ground and we can make a plan from there of how many we're going to cull. Yearling hind or calf of either sex is ideal to cull for us here. Um, we don't like to shoot mature hinds. Um, you're leaving an orphan calf. Um, when we're stalking in here ourselves, um, we tend to shoot calves first. Um, later on in the hind season, then you end up with a number of hinds who haven't got calves because they've been shot earlier. And then we can let clients shoot them from high seats if it's obvious that there isn't a calf at foot. Um, they're a bigger target and they're easier for, for some of these guys to shoot. This time of year, the calves are small and they're tricky to shoot. So we, we try and cull as many calves as we can ourselves. Yeah, like them. Um, caught up with one of the keepers and he informed us he had a couple of hinds and calves running around in one of his pheasant drives he was trying to tighten pheasants into and it's hard for the keepers to control how much they're feeding the pheasants when the deer are sweeping up on the wheat. So we stalked into the wood along the edge of the drive. Jason knows the terrain well. It's not long before he finds a suitable deer but it's not quite what he was expecting. Saw the calf about 30, 35 metres through some undergrowth. Thought it was a hind. All we could see was the white rump patch through the trees. And just from the, the shape and movement of the animal, I thought it was a yearling hind. Um, knew it wasn't a big animal, but I was lucky just to be able to place a low neck shot through a gap in the trees. It was a pokey that was shot. The pheasants are a little bit jumpy and they're well mature. Gamekeepers are tightening them up. But um, these deer are going in and they're sweeping up the wheat as soon as the keepers put it down and it's very hard for them to judge how much their, their pheasants are actually getting. So even though the shot disturbed the pheasants, they'll, they'll come straight back to feed. They just want the deer shot out of the drive. And this hind just, with the pheasants moving away, she just looked back over her shoulder. So managed to I managed to get a shot just through some gaps in the, in the twigs. Most of our stags go to a game dealer. Um, a lot of the hinds and calves we just give to friends. I'll put a lot of calves in my freezer. Um, the calves aren't, aren't worth a whole lot 
as a carcass, but the meat quality is excellent. So um, I use a lot myself. The other guides use it and give it to friends and family. We leave Jason with stalk complete and calf in the pickup. With any luck, we'll be back in Ireland for another seeker hunt soon. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been The Shooting Show.